following talk is presenting a digital corpus and epigraphical database for InduScript research. In the first part, I will discuss the development of a corpus. The interactive corpus of InduStext, in short is it, is the result of more than 30 years of research. It started by Dr. Brian Wells in 1990 during his master thesis and later on as part of his PhD project. In 2009, he asked me to develop an online database to make the corpus available for scholars from around the world. Since then, the corpus has been updated whenever new inscriptions were published. At present, there are 4,665 inscribed artifacts with 5,650 texts, since some artifacts are inscribed on more than one site. For positional analysis of signs and segmentation methods, 3,663 complete texts can be used. The corpus consists of a sign list with more than 700 distinct signs. I will discuss this topic later on in greater detail. The ISIT corpus of inscribed artifacts is extended by 888 artifacts without any inscription but with iconography to complement the analysis of symbols on square seals. The typology of inscribed artifacts distinguishes between pottery, seals of different shapes, bounce relief tablets copied from a mold, copper tablets, incised tablets of different shapes, and seedings on clay labeled as tags. The spatial distribution of these artifacts can be seen on the map. Each pie chart represents a ratio of the artifact types at each site, and we can see that the spatial distribution of inscribed artifacts is not homogeneous. This is an important factor when analyzing Indus inscriptions. Besides each text, several metadata are stored in the ISIT database. This includes the color, the material, size of the object, post type if present, find spot of the artifact. For each text, the sign sequence is coded with additional information about its completeness, reading direction, number of lines, text condition, and so on. For iconographic analysis, each symbol, such as animals, are stored along with its facing direction and completeness, as well as its associated cult object. In total, the database consists of 29 tables with more than 1.2 million data entries. Most inscribed artifacts were found at Harappa and Mohenjo-daro. From these two sites, most of the artifacts are actually coming from three excavation areas, Mounds A and E at Harappa, as well as the DKG area at Mohenjo-daro. Let me focus now on the task how to define the sign list, which is not an easy task. We must distinguish between distinct signs that behave differently and graphic variants of the same sign with identical meaning and sign function. This task is difficult since graphically similar signs may behave very different. For example, signs 154, 156 and 158 look similar but are used on specific artifact types. The statistical analysis of sign seek frequencies is complicated by the heterogeneous distribution of artifact types as shown before. For this reason, the factor of homogeneous distribution was invented that takes the different frequencies of artifact types into account. It is equal one for a perfect homogeneous distribution. In case of an overrepresentation, it is greater than one and smaller than one for underrepresentation. As shown in the diagram, the sign 154 occurs about four times more often than expected on rectangular seals. Sign 156 two times more often on incised tablets 
and sine 158 again four times more often, but on bas relief tablets. This is the reason to keep these three signs as distinct signs in the sign list, not merging them into one sign as proposed by Mahadevan and Papola. The method presented before, as well as the structural analysis of all sign sequences and the search for substitution pattern, results into a sign list of more than 700 signs. The rule of thumb is to keep signs separated as long as we cannot be sure that they are graphic variants of one sign. As shown in the frequency distribution of sign frequencies, this results into 219 singletons that occur only once, and in 111 signs with a frequency greater than 20. This means that frequencies of signs are also very different, a phenomenon that is well known from other ancient writing systems. In the last part of my talk, I will focus on the spatial distribution of inscribed Indus artifacts. We have already seen that the spatial distribution of inscribed artifacts is very heterogeneous. Incised and bas relief tablets were found mostly at Harappa, square seals at Mohenjo-daro, and ceilings in clay from Lothal and Dolavira. When focusing on one site, such as Mohenjo-daro, we can see in the map that square seals, here indicated in the pie chart in green, occur everywhere but most inscribed bangles were found at the Monea area. Focusing on inscribed copper tablets from Moenodaro, we will see that this artifact type is overrepresented at the VS area, as indicated through the corrected frequency ratio and chi values. We can also compare the spatial preference of graphically similar signs. Sign 405 is overrepresented at Harappa, but sign 407 is overrepresented at Mohenjo-daro. The user interface of the ISID database allows you to perform several statistical analyses mapping of the spatial distribution of signs, text, iconography, and artifacts. The user menu allows us to ask complex queries on sign sequences. It is my hope that this research tool will lead us one day to a better understanding of the Indus signs, the regional variations of sign usage on specific artifact types, and finally, to a process of decipherment that includes archaeology, epigraphy, and linguistics in a balanced way. Thank you for your attention.